RF fundamentals, radio frequency fundamentals, and we start by looking at the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is the range of all possible frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is energy that is propagated through free space in the form of electromagnetic waves, such as radio waves, visible light, gamma rays. It has no mass, no charge, and no medium is required. So what do we mean no medium is required? Well, if you had sound waves, the medium that it goes through is air. With radio waves, it doesn't need anything. It can go, it can go through outer space, and it makes no difference. Also notice that radio waves move at the speed of light, which is approximately 300 million meters per second. To give you a little perspective on how fast that is, assume that the Earth is around 25,000 miles around. So therefore, if you were traveling at the speed of light, you could go around the world seven times in about one second. Now here we look at the electromagnetic spectrum and a graph of it. And you can see that depending upon the frequency that different waves will have totally different characteristics. And the only difference, again, is that the frequency is different. So if you look at the left-hand side, you have the longest wavelength, and you also have the lowest frequencies. Now on the right-hand side, you have the shortest wavelengths and the highest frequencies. If we kind of take a tour, uh, you start at, uh, if you start at 10 to the sixth, a frequency of 10 to the sixth, which if you look at the SI units, 10 to the sixth um, is mega. Okay, so this would be megahertz here, AM radio. Now, if you go a little bit, a little bit higher in the frequency range, then you have um, FM radio. And a little bit higher than that, you go to 10 to the 9th. 10 to the 9th is gigahertz. So that is where your Wi-Fi is going to be, right here. Now, it shows that microwave ovens also work at that same frequency range. So now, if you go over to, say, 10 to the 15th, that would be visible light. So visible light... And radio waves is essentially the same thing, just at a different frequency. Now, if you come all the way over here, you get to gamma rays and things, which have a really, really short wavelength and a very, very high frequency. Now, what we're going to really be concerned with is right around this frequency in the gigahertz frequency, because that is where Wi-Fi resides. So why is this important? Because in the room where you're sitting right now, there's a large amount of electromagnetic radiation. You can just, so in that room, you'd have all ranges of frequencies, both modulated and unmodulated signals. A modulated signal means that it carries information. Unmodulated means that it does not carry information. A similar concept is between intentional radiators and not intentional radiator. So intentional radiator is a device that was designed to emit electromagnetic radiation, like a radio tower. And you also have things that emit radiation that weren't designed to do that, like a microwave oven. That radiation is not, uh, the radiation that comes out of that is not really affecting any good purpose. It's just there because of the design of the microwave. Anyway, you have all these waves all over the place, and mixed in with that, it, somewhere, is your Wi-Fi uh, signal, which you will have to extract out somehow. So if the frequency of your Wi-Fi signal is high, is about in the same range as RF in your area, then as other waves in, right in that area, then your Wi-Fi uh, signal may suffer. Your Wi-Fi functionality will suffer. 
keep in mind that you can't detect this electromagnetic radiation you know, with your eyes or ears, but it's very real. So you have all this electromagnetic radiation around. How do you visualize it? Well, you visualize it as a sine wave. And here you can see this here is just a typical sine wave. You see that it has amplitude on the x-axis here and time on the y-axis. Uh, this is just a picture here of a, an oscilloscope, which you can actually look at waveforms on a, a you know an electronic circuitry. And that's not something that you're going to be doing as a Wi-Fi engineer, but it does give you kind of a picture. So how do we describe electromagnetic waves? Wavelength, which is the distance between two successive crests or peaks in meters, indicated by lambda. Frequency, which is the number of complete cycles per second in hertz, um, indicated by the letter F. Amplitude, which is signal strength or power, or the height of the wave, measured in milliwatts or dBm. And phase, or phase shift, which is the offset of a given wave from another wave or reference point, measured in degrees. So phase is a little different than the others in that it's the difference between one radio wave and another, as opposed to the others, which only require one, one radio wave. So here's an illustration of wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. So wavelength is indicated here. It's the difference between two uh, successive crests. This here, from here to here, is also the same distance. So it really doesn't matter where you measure it from, but it's, it's still the same thing. Now the power or the amplitude is, is the height of the wave. That's this. And obviously you need a high enough amplitude of received signal in order to make use of that in, a, in an RF um, system like Wi-Fi. And you also have frequency. So frequency is the number of oscillations, the number of, of waves that you have. So this repeats itself how many times in one second? So if, it's, if the frequency is 100 hertz, it, then you have uh, the repeated 100 times per second. If the frequency is in gigahertz, then it's how many billions of times per second. Here's another illustration of frequency. And the frequency on the left is much lower, is a low frequency, and the frequency on the right is a higher frequency. So you can see all the, the whole difference between frequencies is how many times per second um, the waveform repeats itself. Now here is an illustration of phase and the first thing to notice in phase is you see two waves. So you can see that they are out of phase by this amount here which is measured in degrees. So if these, if these peaks were to, were to line up, then they'd be in phase, and the, um, uh, the phase shift would be zero. And here's another illustration of phase. So here you can see that waves that are in phase, uh, and you can see that all of the peaks line up. And then here, you can see that the, that the different waves are out of phase. Um, the peaks obviously don't line up. So the most important relationship that you need to understand is the inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. So the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. And you can use a formula to figure it. So you use lambda, that, that's the Greek letter lambda, equals C, the speed of light, divided by frequency. So frequency is always measured in hertz. Lambda is always measured in meters. And C, the speed of light, you can use this approximation for all you're figuring, which is 300 million 
meters per second. What is the wavelength of a 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal? We look at the formula, which is lambda equals speed of light divided by, by frequency. And the first thing we do is we um, write down the frequency in hertz. So here we have this very large, large number. And to get the uh, wavelength, simply take 300 million, which is the speed of light, divide that by the frequency, and in this case you end up with 0.1224 meters, and you could translate meters into inches easily enough, and that comes out to 4.8 inches. If you look at antenna sizes, the antenna size, or the, the, the size of the antenna is related to the wavelength. So here is another example. What is the wavelength of a 5.775 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal? Again, we use the same formula. Start by taking the frequency in hertz, which is this number here. Uh, then you take the speed of light, divide it by the frequency, and you end up with 0 0.0519 meters. And you take meters Translate it to inches, and you see that it's about the wavelength is about two inches. Now, that is shorter than the previous example, which was about four inches. So you can see that the higher wavelength, the, the higher frequency produced the shorter wavelength. One more example when you tuned to a radio station like 99.5 FM, what's the wavelength? Now here, keep in mind that the frequency of FM radio stations is in megahertz, not gigahertz like Wi-Fi stuff. Since megahertz is lower than gigahertz, then we know that the wavelength will be longer than the two examples above. So here, we take the wavelength and you can see, uh, so, excuse me, we take the frequency and you can see uh, that that is a smaller number than in the, in the um, previous examples. And we just take the speed of light, divide it by the frequency in hertz, and we see that we get 3.01 meters. You transmit, you, tr you translate meters to feet, and you can see that's about 10 feet. Quite a big difference in how you would have to design an antenna for an FM radio station then for Wi-Fi, based on the fact that the, um, that the wavelength is so much larger in FM radio. Here we can see the RF components that would be used in any type of system where you want to transmit radio waves, transmit and receive radio waves. So this could be on the left side, if, if this was a, an FM radio station, then you would have your radio station and transmission tower on the left-hand side, and the right-hand side could be uh, an FM radio in your car. If this was, if this is Wi-Fi, then the on the left side that could be your wireless access point, and on the right-hand side that could be your uh, that that could be the radio in your uh, inside of of your laptop or your tablet or whatever. Now, going from one antenna across the medium of, of air or, or space, that's called wave propagation. Now, a wave is modulated with information to form a carrier signal. In other words, they take a wave, they put information on top of that wave, and that becomes a carrier signal. Now, a transceiver is made up of a transmitter and a receiver in one. That's also just called the radio a lot in Wi-Fi. So what do you have? The transceiver on the left-hand side you could start produces a signal and then that signal is, um, is modulated and then amplified, sent out across to the other antenna. It's received amplified, and then demodulated on the other side. 
here we look at the concept of gain. So we know that both the amplifier and the antenna can produce gain. A gain is essentially the opposite of loss. So gain means that you are going to increase the power or the amplitude of a signal. If you have an amplifier, that is active gain. Active gain means that you have to have some power source to the amplifier to increase the signal, signal strength. In an antenna, that's passive gain meaning that there's no, you don't need any power to going to the antenna. It's simply the physical shape of the antenna uh, that produces the gain. So when you transmit a wave across from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna, at the receiving antenna, you would like that to be pretty close to uh, you, you would like that waveform to be pretty close to what it was at the receiving antenna. Once again, at the receiving antenna, you would hope that the waveform that you pick up is going to be pretty close to what was originally sent. However, that's not always the case. The wave propagation from one antenna to the other is fraught with danger. All kinds of things can happen to the signal. So here's some of the things that can happen. The first is reflection, and that occurs when a wave hits a smooth surface larger than the wavelength. The wave bounces off in another direction. Then you have refraction, where the wave is bent as it passes through an object. You have diffraction, where the wave is bent as it goes around an object. And you have scattering, where you have multiple reflections caused by hitting an uneven or a rough surface. Next you have attenuation, which simply means that the signal is getting weaker the farther it goes from the transmitting antenna. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as free space path loss. Then you have absorption, which is the loss of a signal strength as it passes through a wall or a similar object, which is attenuation. So if you had like a brick wall or a stone wall, you'd probably get more atten attenuation as it passed through that than it would passing through like a cubicle wall. Um, so all of these factors cause deterioration in the signal, and that's what you must deal with as a Wi-Fi engineer.